Hello and welcome to a new edition of Highlights from the Hill. I'm your co-host Jim Cousins, here with my co-host Dr. Carol Cavanaugh, the Superintendent of Schools, and this week we're talking about all things STEAM week and curriculum things that we have some teachers who are doing some exciting things in that area. Hello Carol. Hi Jim, thanks for having us. Uh, today I have with me Carla Crisofulli, who is the subject matter leader in the math department at Hopkinton High School, but she is also uh, working with some CVTE grant funds, and I'll let her talk about what CVTE means. And I also have Valerie Lachansky, who is working also with grant funding. Uh, she is a STEAM consultant now in the district, having retired from Hopkinton High School last year. So welcome, ladies. Well, thank you for having us. So Carla, I will let you start and tell our audiences what is CVTE? So CVTE is Career Vocational Technical Education. And uh, basically the state has acknowledged that um, while we have a labor supply and a job supply, our, um, our, labor, our labor supply is not skilled for the current jobs that are out there. We need, we need to, um, basically um, there's, there's a scarcity of skills. So Career Vocational Technical Education, which is what our grant is about, is about having students um, gain a set of skills to be prepared for the workforce um, in both vocational uh, tr uh, vocational pathways and um, and just what's out there for jobs. Mm -hmm. So kind of like running robots instead of running, um, I don't know, more industrial machines. Kind of like the skill set is changing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, the, the way our occupational landscape is changing, um, there are a lot of traditional vocational technical jobs out there that are available, let's say uh, plumbing, electrical, but a lot of those new vocational technical skills are centered around computers. Uh, so in many aspects of computer science. So mm -hmm. that, is, that is a huge occupational demand in Massachusetts. And that part of this grant is to prepare students to um, to meet the needs of those jobs. Okay. And a lot of this grant, um, one, of, one of the uh, purposes of this grant is to say um, a four-year college degree is great, mm -hmm. but there are many jobs that are only requiring a certificate or an associate's degree to get your foot in the door. Um, so that's what we want to bring information about to our students to say, hey, uh, you know, you can, you can go on the four-year college pathway, which many of our students do, mm -hmm. but there are other pathways available. And we do have students where that might be a, a good option. Another part of this grant is um, understanding that uh, we have a vocational school right down the street, Keefe Technical High School, that has a great amount of offerings. And they've really upgraded um, uh, and changed their offerings to meet the occupational demand out there. And we just want to make our community aware of what they have to offer. So that's something that I was sort of wondering about, mm -hmm. Carla. Um, back in the day, those mm -hmm. of us who have been yeah. in public education for a very long time, you know, we probably remember when we had programs where kids had automotive in our high schools, yeah. mm -hmm. woodworking in our high schools, home economics, culinary, those kinds of things. Are we bringing those back? So um, that actually all changed in the 70s, Carol. So, so it's <laughs> been a while since Dating yourself. Um, this is Chris Afouli. So, <laughs> so uh, Chapter 74 Education, which is Career Vocational Technical Education, uh, started chartering their own schools in the 70s. So basically, um, just like we're districted to Keefe Tech, the, the, there's an enormous expense um, associated with setting up an automotive shop, uh, setting up a carpentry shop. Uh, so that's why vocational schools are regionalized now. Um, so we can't duplicate services. If we did, it would be to great expense for a very few students. Mm -hmm. So that's why we want to let our students know that there are traditional vocational opportunities at Keefe Tech. Um, but what we want to do also in Hoppington is offer anything that they don't offer. So we don't duplicate services and costs. So for example, if we can offer a computer certificate program here at the high school, which is our different certificate programs at the high school that don't overlap with what Keith is doing, mm -hmm. that's all the better. And that's at a, mm -hmm. that's at a very low cost for us, um, you know, to offer a computer certificate. That's what the, the cost of the testing site, basically, um, if that can be enveloped into the current class offering. So, uh, no, we, we don't want to, you know, why rebuild what's already there? You know, why reinvent the wheel? We might as well just stand on the shoulders of giants and, and expand uh, from, from what Keith is doing. Mm -hmm. Lovely. So, Valerie, tell us a little about your STEAM grant. Um, I'm very excited about the STEAM grant. I think the STEAM grant is going to give us an opportunity to accomplish some of the goals that we've been working on 
for the last few years as part of the STEAM team. So as you, I'm sure you remember, we started the STEAM team probably two years ago. Mm -hmm. um, a bunch of teachers um, in the STEAM disciplines getting together and talking about STEAM education in the district. And we had a lot of ideas and things we wanted to do, but it was very challenging to accomplish them. Um, so with this grant, um, we were able to sort of laser focus on some of those ideas and um, reach out to the community to support STEAM education in the district. So some of the things that we're looking to do with the grant are things that we can't normally fund in the budget um, with focus on um, increasing career awareness, particularly at the high school, and enriching opportunities in the classroom. Again, things that we don't normally, uh, aren't normally able to fund with the budget. Um, interdisciplinary opportunities and, and showing kids those connections between what they're learning in the classroom and some authentic applications um, uh, locally as well. So I don't think we defined STEAM, and I think most people know, but we may have some of our viewers who don't know what the acronym stands for. Great question. So science, technology, engineering, art and design, and math. Yes. And it just happens to coincide that this week is also STEAM week mm -hmm. um, across Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. yeah, all of our public schools are celebrating STEAM. All right. Are you, are you in the um, organizing phase with the grant, or have you started individual initiatives? Um? Well, we, we're sort of taking a two-prong approach. So mm -hmm. one thing that we're doing is looking for ways to use the grant, again, to fund those sorts of things that are outside the school budget. But also the other part is to reach out to the community to sort of foster some more relationships between the businesses and the parents and, and bring some of those things into the classroom. So we've done a little of both. Mm -hmm. We've been working a lot of the infrastructure to get some of those things going. We're about ready to launch two, uh, two initiatives in terms of that community piece where we're gonna be reaching out to people, asking them to do short videos that talk about their career, but also how their career use science, engineering, math, art and design, et cetera, in their field. And we're also um, relaunching a find an expert survey where we're gonna ask members of the community, both businesses and residents, whether or not they'd like to support the STEAM education in the district and how they'd like to do that. So everybody can be watching for those to be coming out soon. So there's that. And then we also have some programs that are already scheduled to come into the classroom. So we have an erosion program that's gonna be going into second grade um, from the Museum of Science. We have a program from the New England Aquarium that's gonna be going to the kindergarten classes about animal habitats. But we also have been doing field trips. We have more field trips scheduled, taking students out to see labs mm -hmm. um, and experts mm -hmm. in the field. How many grade levels do you touch with this uh, type of? Oh, we're K, K through 12. No kidding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So. How many people, like, so you're not um, a teacher now, although no. Evan was so happy to announce that you were still mm -hmm. going to be um, in contact with us. Um, how many people are you working with? Well, I'm working with all the STEAM educators in the district as okay. well as the building administrators, yeah. So okay. it's yeah. a big team. Yeah. But yeah. I'd say I'm so excited to still be working with this team mm -hmm. because they are also dedicated and enthusiastic about the work. So, mm -hmm. so um, I do want to point out where, where your grant and my grant meet is that career piece for my part. Right. So my grant is career vocational technical education, mm -hmm. but that career piece is something we really want to uh, build into the Hopkinton curriculum. We want to uh, give students opportunities uh, for career awareness, exploration, um, and immersion. Uh, it, it's kind of that, that next layer of what our students would, um, would need. So a lot of us, are, we're, we're great at preparing kids to go off to college, mm -hmm. but the next step that we need is to prepare them for, well, what's after college? What careers are you looking at? And that's one of the uh, pieces that we'd like to work on. So not only would we like to offer a, co a class on career explorations that's tailored to any student who, um, who takes it, which is, a, which is a great opportunity for all students to be able to take the same class, uh, but we'd also like to offer embedded experiences for students, embedded work experiences for students, like internships, work studies, job shadow, work site visits, um, to really give them a, um, a better lens through which to, to uh, focus their future. Mm. And that's so. one of the pieces I'm most excited about yeah. that we've been wanting to do for years, is reach mm. out to the community and look for those opportunities for students to even shadow for a few hours on an yeah. early release or for a full day, mm -hmm. um, all the way to internships. Right. So students can see those connections mm -hmm. and those job opportunities as well. So that, that will be my focus over the next few months as we sort of start that outreach. Yeah. Yeah. 
So what I'm hearing really is that the work will transcend you know, just the two of you and it will yeah. be um, something that invites in some of our guidance counselors yeah. and just sort of other people who are also on the high school faculty. Mm -hmm. Oh, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yes, longevity is definitely something that we're looking for. Yeah. Yep. Yes. And I think a lot of what we're doing is you know, it's helpful to have the grant money, but I think that because we have so many people in our public schools who are invested, that this is sort of coming along because people are just willing to sort of even give of their time. Yeah. Yeah, there, there is a lot of, we've done a lot of the man hours in the back end, uh, mm -hmm. setting it up. Um, you know, so much of what we're talking about is awareness too, just letting students know their options, you know. So, uh, but that's, that's been a big piece of it, um, either letting guidance know so they can communicate to students, figuring out how to let students know, parents know, um, that there's a whole host of options out there. Um, for your college is great, but there are other opportunities for, for well, students and, afterwards. And speaking of that, another thing that we're doing is in the high school student memo of the week every mm -hmm. week. We are now doing a STEAM scene article mm -hmm. and with different themes each month at different focus areas. And the focus in October mm -hmm. has been providing students with resources and ideas about careers that don't require a four-year degree. Mm -hmm. And so uh, what are their opportunities for yeah. Um, STEAM careers, which you know are often mm -hmm. high, higher paying jobs, mm -hmm. um, but STEAM careers that only need a two-year degree or perhaps a certificate. Mm -hmm. And so we're providing students and guidance counselors and faculty with a lot of resources as well. Right. And we have to keep in mind that there are kids where that is a good choice. You know, there are kids, I mean, we, we have this vision of Hoppington is 100% going to college, but we there are kids where that might be a better fit and we have to let them know that that's okay to have those explorations of maybe a certificate program, maybe a community college, maybe a two-year associate's degree um, for their future that, that could potentially lead to a four-year degree, but we mm -hmm. have to allow them to say that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what part of our voice is here. Sure. I think that it's, I, I hear that a lot, and you know, it's more than okay. It's great yeah. because the world needs everything. Yeah. It needs exactly. every kind of person. And everybody's as valuable as everybody exactly. else. Yep. Exactly. So as we, as we explore these opportunities for students to go out into the community and see these types of jobs, we're looking at the trades all the way to the engineers and the health sciences. Right. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's exciting work. Yeah. Now, yeah. Um, I think you're building on something that you started a couple years ago. Right. Right. How new is what you're doing? in connection with this uh, new grant? Well, we just started this summer in June. Um, the, well, so the Department of Education about two years ago started identifying, um, identifying needs in their um, work pipelines, or, or the pipeline. We weren't having the, um, usually a lot of times there's enough people qualified for enough jobs where there's kind of an equilibrium. But a couple years ago, they were kind of getting to a crisis point, especially with health, healthcare and computer professions. Those were, the two main industries. Uh, so they started talking about building pipelines and letting people be aware that there are in different vocational jobs like dental hygienists, things like that, that are good paying jobs that they just weren't qualified people for. So um, that took a couple of years for the Department of Ed to, to identify and then they started putting out grant funding um, this past year to start having high schools um, let people know that these opportunities are out. Mm -hmm. Yes, and to be fair, Jennifer Parson, the assistant superintendent, yes, is the person she, who wrote the CBTE grant, yeah. mm -hmm. and there will be other iterations of that grant that yeah. she will continue to look for. Uh, Carl, one of the things that you've mm -hmm. talked about before, which I think is really good information, uh, you have statistics about earnings. You know, if you come out of a four-year college and yeah. the debt that's incurred and all of that. So, if you could share a little bit of that. So, um, part of my my research, my starting point was. A second, we're a Hoppington. Why aren't? Why are we even talking about this? Isn't more college better, right? Like, why? Why aren't we encouraging everybody to go to a four-year college? Um, and and the general answer is yes. Okay, there is a there is a, 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 a very strong correlation. The more education you have, the higher earnings you have. However, on the flip side of that, if you look at um, how much money it costs to procure that education, um, this and this is from you know. Um, WBZ News, um, the average student who uh, graduates college, uh, their starting salary in Massachusetts is $50,000, where, and, and their average college debt is about 36000 
starting salaries for a lot of vocational fields, like a dental hygienist, election, uh, uh, electrician, plumber, is 60000 you know, without that. So, so, um, so a lot of these earnings, and there's so many of these uh, new certificate programs with, for computers where um, a four-year degree is fine to get, but you can also get work experience and certificates and climb the ladder at equal pace with equal pay. Um, I actually talked to our own IT department about their different paths, and they explained uh, they, they're a great resource to tell us all their different ways they had come to IT with this, mm -hmm. where you can still have strong earnings um, without having to go that traditional path. The traditional path will get you there. The you know, you will have to pay for it, but it will get you there. But there are so many other ways to get these mid-level skill job earnings that are that are out there. And in Massachusetts, that's where a lot of the demand is. Um, you know, for for short education, you can you can um, support a family. It's so um, funny because most of those careers that you're mentioning, I see as STEAM careers. Yeah. Right. We can talk about so a lot IT of them are and, STEAM. Absolutely. And, and even a, even a profession like plumbing, there's so much math, yep. right, and yep. involved in that. I was at a workshop yesterday at WPI, mm -hmm. and they were talking about STEM education as part of their STEM Week mm -hmm. um, celebration. And they were talking about research that has shown that careers in STEM mm -hmm. are the greatest way to increase social mobility. Yep. And mm -hmm. for students that may come from families that have some financial struggles, that the STEM fields are the way to, to increase yeah. the, the standard living. And that's where a lot of the research for this grant came out. They just said, if you just have some education after high school, you can greatly increase your income. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I know we're thinking, oh, it's only one or two kids. but. Uh, there's a there's there's a core of 20 30 kids a year who this might be a great viable option for so if they can just get something some certificate some two year program in a targeted stem field because uh, in Massachusetts especially Mas metro west that's where the jobs are um, that will really um, help them financially in the long run yeah, yeah. So. talk a little bit about mass bay i know that you've so with um, them as well so if i back up one year um, this is kind of how I got into this, this grant to begin with. Um, I, I, I've taught a lot of different classes at Hoppington High School, and I've been working with a pocket of kids who um, would really benefit from um, starting off at a community college. So I know um, the Massachusetts Community College um, system has been working on early college programs. And early college programs are ways to offer students opportunities to take co college classes while in high school. And their initial model was to send their professors out to remote sites, remote schools, to, um, to offer these classes. And the thought being, if kids take these classes, they'll, they'll have a better idea of what college is. They'll, they'll hopefully, you know, they can start at a community college and transition if they want to a four-year college afterwards. Um, so, so that is roundabout way. Um, we are now offering here at Hoppington High School a Mass Bay Community College class on computer scripting, which is a baseline programming class um, that will help students in many, many STEM fields. Mm -hmm. so, so that's how we, we started with our, our relationship with Mass Bay Community College. Uh, fast forward now, the early college model is now shifting across the state. Uh, where um, the goal is to get students to go to community colleges. And if, and if they go to community colleges, um, the hope is that they will go and then have an easier time completing their degrees. Mm -hmm. So we would like to start offering dual enrollment to Mass Bay Community College uh, for students for next year. So that will, the, the benefit to that is, is the data shows and from the early college programs, if they can have some credits under their belt in high school, and then continue afterwards, they will, um, they'll have um, a higher chance of finishing. And, and we are talking about a lot of these underrepresented kids in STEM, you know. So um, this, is, this is their leg up and, and entry and access point into um, a lot of decent paying jobs. Mm. Um, so um, if we offer dual enrollment here, it's really of no cost to us. I mean, it's students would have to get there. The benefit for students is A, they'd have credit center in college, and B, we could support them here at the high school, and they also have tremendous supports at Mass Bay. So it's kind of a wraparound approach. That's really the community college's new buzzword is that wraparound yes. approach to get students to the end. Um, How many students are taking the course? Right now, I think we have 18 um, who are taking great. the course, that's, so it's good. Yeah, it's that's been, great. And it's a, it's a really diverse mix of kids, which is which Well, is that great, shows the so. interest yeah. that the students have for a program like good. this. That's great. So. Mm -hmm. You know what I find so, so 
interesting mm -hmm. about this is that as well as many other aspects that I have come in contact mm -hmm. with the school system, the school system is so outward facing. You know, it's mm -hmm. not just we got the kids, we're gonna dump the knowledge into them. Mm -hmm. It is how do we bring in the community, how do we bring mm -hmm. in businesses, mm -hmm. how do we extend the real world yeah. and bring it to our to our students to give them a better start at it. Yeah. It's yeah. really amazing. Those are our next steps. That's yeah. exactly where we're headed. Yes. And before we finish, I would love for Valerie to talk a little bit about science fair, because even though we don't have sort of numerical, hard and fast quantitative data, there is something we think about kids who have that opportunity. So, um, well, I I, man, I started the science fair when I started here 32 years ago, and it's still thriving. In fact, it's mm -hmm. it's gotten so large we're trying to figure out how to manage it, um, which is a good problem. Um, but. Um, that through those videos I was talking about that we've piloted, I just reached out some, to some of my graduates um, to just talk about their careers and sort of work out the kinks of, of before we expand it to the, um, the community. But Car Carol and I were talking about how s the students that have done it for me so far, that many of them started their own businesses. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so, and they were all former science fair students. Mm -hmm. So I said, I'd be curious I just find it really interesting on um, wondering whether or not students that do science fair projects get comfortable with taking risks, mm -hmm. get that bug of creating, problem solving, yeah. and if that then drives them or increases their comfort level of creating their own companies mm -hmm. because many of them, their job description is CEO and founder of. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Mm. Really something. Yeah, that's awesome. So do you have anything really exciting on the horizon, something coming up that you'd love to share? Well, for me, it's, it's getting ready to start that community launch yeah. Um, yeah. for the videos and the Find an Expert. And so um, anyone that wants to like to get in touch with me that's uh, interested in supporting it can get to me through you. Sure. Right? So I may mean, still have a Hopkinton email as well. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the different, setting up the different field trips and the programs mm -hmm. and the shadowing and all these things. Yeah. yeah. I think that there's an enormous you know, number of opportunities really for our kids in, in both yeah. of these settings. And um, just to point out too, that transportation is a part of our grant. So if there are kids who would like to do these internships, externships, any of these things, Mass Bay courses yeah. and get off campus, um, we, we have the money to transport them. And we already, we've awesome. already scheduled a couple of those. Yeah. So That's yeah, great. getting, so getting the students great. opportunities to see labs and talk to experts yeah. in the field yeah. is exciting. So as you were saying, this school system is dynamic. We're mm -hmm. always mm -hmm. seeking to improve the dedicated professionals mm -hmm. um, across the board, K to 12, um, but also the town, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm fully yes. expecting that the town is gonna embrace this and will mm -hmm. be really excited about supporting the work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you uh, give me a couple of examples of, um, in your past work, some businesses um, that have supported what you do? Like you just mentioned some kids being scheduled to go out to some labs. like. Like, what are some of the opportunities that have happened here? Well, in the past, we've had we've also had, had teachers go to local labs mm -hmm. so that they can see what's going, see the applications themselves, and bring them back to the classroom. And so we're tapping to, into some of those again. So we've um, there's Pure, which is um, a water filtration company in Marlboro. So mm -hmm. we're planning on taking some students to that. Mm -hmm. um, Select has supported us in the past, and we've had teachers, physics teachers, have gone and spent some time with them to see mm -hmm. the applications of um, solar energy. Um, there's Waters in Milford mm -hmm. that we're in contact with, and um, Bose is another one that I've reached out to and uh, taking Bose some yeah. students to, yeah. to, to visit their lab. Yeah. So, awesome. As I said, there's a, a wide range of businesses and companies right. in the area that right. we'll be tapping into. And did you mention you have a class running now? I thought you were kind of like, Getting all the knowledge. <laughs> so, uh, yes, yeah, so this was part of that earlier initiative of, of um, early college. So okay. that was, um, that was a, a, a part of the final funding of that. It's a free class. It's open to everybody. Mm -hmm. Completely, it's, it's three free college credits. Mm -hmm. So, um, and that's being offered after school by a Mass Bay professor here at Hoppington. Great opportunity for kids. Wow. It's a nice mm -hmm. foot in the door. 
Yeah. Wow. And I think to even talk about the intersection of all of this, it was very mm -hmm. interesting. Valerie introduced me to um, the MSEN, which is the Massachusetts Science and Engineering Network. Mm -hmm. And so we would attend a meeting and we'd be there with the Mass Bay people who would yeah. be talking about these programs. And we'd go back to Hopkinton and say, hey, there's this program. And Carla would say, I'm on it. And Carla was a member of the STEAM team, that original yes. group right. a few years so, ago. Yeah. And I remember the day you came up to me as part of our STEAM team thinking about how can we enrich opportunities for students yeah. in the district. And you came up to me and said, what about doing a, a dual enrollment? And, and here, here we, we are, are now, So two years thank later. you for all yeah. of your work. It's good. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah. And we should probably have a little shout out to your other two SMLs, uh, Doug Scott and Colleen Janino. Yes. I'm um, Colleen, who is the art um, SML, and mm -hmm. Doug, who kind of falls into that technology engineering yeah. area. Well, really, and all the STEAM teachers in the district. So when we, yes. we contacted them and said there's resources in the STEAM grant, um, what are some things you'd love to do that you can't normally do in the budget? Mm -hmm. It's those teachers that are finding these programs also right. in the elementary grades in particular, programs that can come into the classroom. Yes, and yeah. for people who have loved the STEAM night at Elmwood yeah. in grade two, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. those teachers just embraced that program two yeah. or three years ago now and put amazing STEAM nights yeah. together and yeah. that was entirely without you know really any funding they just went after it and mm -hmm. you know also a result of the STEAM team also a result right. of the yeah. team. turning math right. night yes. into STEAM yeah. night and supported by the other STEAM leaders in the district so we have mm -hmm. a large number of STEAM teachers from other buildings that are there at second grade STEAM mm -hmm. night yes. um, offering activities and high school students that's supporting the work yeah. yeah I think the excitement yeah. is K to 12 now you know? yes and, and that's yeah, that's the yeah, yeah. It is. Everyone working together. And that's all the time that we have now. All right. And we'll well, thanks by. for having us. Thank, Thank you both great. for the work that you do and for sharing it with our community. All our right. pleasure. Thank you so yes. much. Thank and you. thank you. It was really a breath of fresh air to have some curriculum on our show today. Yeah. 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 Exactly. All right. all right. And thank you for watching this episode of Highlights from the Hill. And we look forward to seeing you again next time. Have you ever considered texting and driving? If so, you should know the consequences. If caught texting and driving for the first time, you could get in a $100 fine plus your license taken away for 60 days. The consequences only get worse the more you get caught. Even if you don't get caught, there could be serious effects. You could get into a car accident and hurt yourself or someone else. Texting and driving is a very dangerous combination, so stop before this happens to you.